Okay, hello, I'll start again. So, so um, yeah, so for the past few months I've been doing some uh, privacy research. Uh, um, so yeah, so one of my first ideas basically was to implement a sort of ring signature based mixing contract on Ethereum as just like a simple proof of concept of privacy. Um, so yeah, so basically a ring signature is um, so normally when you sign a transaction digitally, it's signed by one public key, so you know that the signature came from this person. With a ring signature, um, the signature is created using a group of keys, and then only one member of the group actually creates the signature, but then once the signature has been formed, you can't tell from the outside who signed it. So basically, if you could sign a transaction this way instead of with just your own key, you'd be able to like, plausibly deny that you were involved in a transaction. This is part of the way Monero works. So, yeah. So, let's see, so once we have that, um, we can implement a mixing contract using these sort of primitives. So, the idea of a mixing contract, I have rough code for this right now, but it hasn't been like, tested. So. The rough idea of how it works right now is that um, a user would submit a public key to the contract as well as a deposit. The deposit is a fixed amount of either. Um, as well, there's a fixed ring size currently in the contract. It's probably going to be set to like 11, because that's what Monero uses, maybe 12, just because like, it's a bit bigger. But, um, so then after that amount of people has submitted a public key and a deposit to the contract, then we're able to pull that list of public keys from the contract and create a ring signature from that. So, so the initial public key that's submitted, um, it could be that the receiver of the transaction has the corresponding private key. So you would perhaps talk to the receiver beforehand. There, there's, there's a few ways that this could go. This is one way. So you can possibly talk to the recipient beforehand and just be like, hey, so you send me like a public key. They send you a public key. You send this to the contract with some ether. Um, then once the contract has been filled with public keys, you create, or the recipient now has the private key of one of the keys in the ring. They would now create the signature, signing off, basically saying, send me the ether that was deposited into this contract. And then every recipient for every sender would be able to do the same thing. Or alternatively, the sender would know the, the private key, and then they would create the signature and then notify the recipient that they could withdraw from the contract. So yeah, that's the basic idea of how it works. Um, I'm gonna look at some code after I talk about some things. So yeah, so the first issue, why this hasn't really been implemented yet, is because the ring signature is super large. So you can't actually store a ring signature with more than around five members on um, in a contract right now without running out of gas. So you can't perform the verification that would be needed to implement this contract with enough rings that with a large enough ring size that it would be actually useful. Because if the ring is too small, it's easy to sort of backtrace and see, like link some transactions together. So a possible solution. What uh, the first one I thought of was to just create a pre-compiled contract that would verify our signature and then eventually like maybe push this upstream. Um, so yeah, I implemented that and it seems to work so far, which is cool. But for it to actually work, it would have to be pushed upstream, which would take a very long time. So yeah, so another uh, solution I was thinking of is to just use the BN256 pre-compiles and hopefully that would reduce the gas cost. Um, so yeah, so create the signature, so you need the private key, you can't create a signature on-chain, so you have to sign off-chain and then do all the verification on-chain in the contract, and as well, how to present double spend. So, um, similarly to how Monero does it, you would prevent double spends by using linkable ring signatures, so this is a variation on um, the original ring signature. Um, per Algorithm. So, linkable ring signatures basically adds another um, like key image to the signature. So the key image is like an obfuscated 
uh, image of the person who actually signed it. So you can't actually tell who signed it from the key image, but you can tell if two signatures have the same key image that they were signed by the same person. So basically this would prevent a double spend by saying if you're trying to submit a signature to the contract again, but you only submitted one deposit, then like no, you can't do it. So yes. Um, so some extensions to this that I was thinking of. So I think one that would be really cool is just generalized transaction privacy. So right now when you think of mixing, you think of like ether or some sort of monetary value. But um, with Ethereum, you could extend this to not just the ether value of the transaction, but to involve the call data, since what's happening in the mixer is basically that you have like a transaction and then this transaction gets signed as a ring and that gets submitted. And um, you could instead of the value in the transaction, you could put some stuff in the call data and then have this execute. Um, yeah, so I think that would be really cool. But that would raise an issue of like, who pays for gas and that sort of thing. So, yeah. So this would allow for like, private function calls or private contract deployments. Uh, Yes, and also value pointing, because as I mentioned initially, the contract right now needs a fixed either denomination amount, because basically if you allow people to send whatever amount of ether they want to the contract, they'd be able to link the send of the recipient. So value pointing would be like pretty cool, I think. Um, so I was thinking, I like just started thinking of this, so basically using something similar to how the operation transaction works. So it's using commitments to a value instead of the actual value. But then this would somehow need people to keep track of all their values and stuff off chain. But yeah, this is for the research. So yeah, um, that's basically it. This is like GitHub. If you want to check out the code I've written so far, it's on there. I have mixing contracts and I go with implementation of wing folders and bring signatures. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Do we have some more questions? Hey, uh, thanks for your talk. Just an observation you had mentioned about the transactions, if it will become a call data, and who is going to pay for the gas, etc. Yeah. Like just an idea is just a meta transaction here so can have in a way like uh, just to have a layer, layer who will pay for that one. It's um, just like uh, you can consider maybe like uh, <coughs> as a solution just to have a meta transaction concept into that place. Like EIP 1077 is actually describing how it can be handled. Yeah. And then in case, like, uh, whoever is coming with an executable transaction can receive a refund back. Okay. So, were you asking about the, like, who pays for the gas, kind of? Yeah, so, yeah, I've been thinking about this. Um, yeah, like what you said, like, basically, like, Delegating someone else to somehow do it would probably be the best bet. Because if you just submit all your stuff to the transaction, it's pretty obvious that it's like you. So either like you probably have like a delegating person or like a delegating group, something like that. They wouldn't have to be trusted, just like you want them to like do it kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs>